Are you ready to start driving more traffic to your website with Google ads, but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Today, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step how to set up your first Google ads campaign, even if you've never used it before. Now, by the end of this video, you're going to learn how to learn and be ready to launch your first, first Google ad, and you're going to learn best practices for maximizing your ads performance. Now, if you're excited to learn more about Google ads and marketing tips, please make sure to hit subscribe and click the bell so you'll never miss a new video. Now, quick overview, what is Google ads? Well, Google ads is an online advertising platform where you can create ads that appear on Google search results, YouTube, and millions of other websites across the Google display network. Now, why are you going to use Google Ads? Well, in our opinion, it's one of the most effective ways to reach potential customers, especially when they're searching for your products or services that you offer. If you think about this from an advertising perspective, whenever you run both Facebook ads, TV ads, radio ads, we are targeting a certain perspective of person or demographic, but they're not actively searching for our product. Now, if we think about Google, if we pull up Google and we are searching for plumbers in Philadelphia, this is the easiest way for us to appear for some sort of search centered around plumbers in Philadelphia. Now, again, this is something that someone is looking for and not just, they might be in the research phase still, but they're actively searching for your product. The other beautiful part about Google ads is you can set your budget, choose your target audience, uh, and only pay when people click on your ad PPC. Now, how do we start a Google ads campaign? What we're going to do is you can either type in Google ads, you can go to ads.google.com and it's going to pull up with this portal. Now they're always doing incredible incentives. So what's cool is you can choose now. If you know that you're going to be spending $3,000 with Google ads in the first 60 days, you can receive up to a $1,500 in ad credit. You get everything from $500 all the way to $1,500. Now we're going to go to ads.google.com and there is a button that says get started. Now it's going to ask us a couple pieces of information about our business. You can create your ads and then obviously you can set your budget. So we're going to call ourselves the Philly bakery. Now, where do we want people to go? <clears throat> we're going to put www.phillybakery.com. This is going to be where you put your website in. Now it is a fake domain, so I don't know if any information is going to pull up, but here's what we can do. Now we can add more information. So if you have a phone number, you can allow for it to call your phone number. If you use your YouTube channel, you can have it use your YouTube channel, Google My Business Profile, things like that. Now, what we're going to do is we're gonna choose a goal for this campaign. Now, depending on what kind of business you are, this is obviously going to change. The one that we're gonna talk through is we're going to look at search campaigns. Now, there's everything from search campaigns to display campaigns, to shopping campaigns, video and app. But for beginners, we're going to focus on search campaigns, which are only going to show ads in Google search results. Now, this is going to be where choosing the right campaign type is very important. We're going to look at what we want them to do. So for instance, we want someone to fill out a, we want some page views on our product. Now that's going to take us to a sort of campaign that we get to choose from. Now, it's going to try to have you do performance max campaigns anytime that you try to set this up. Sometimes you can see really good results from performance max campaigns. Everyone has different opinions on what works and what doesn't. In our mind, performance max campaigns have not performed well. We've done some research on the back end, looking what other, uh, other advertisers are doing. And really, we haven't seen very good results from what uh, people are doing with performance max. Obviously, like we talked about, there's everything from video, display, app, and more. But what we're going to do here is we're going to choose search. Now that we've chosen search, we're going to provide some keywords that we're looking for. So there is a way that you can say uh, bakery. And if we type in just a broad keyword of bakery, it's going to give us some keyword recommendations here. The biggest thing here is to think about what the main keywords that someone would be typing in for, for your product or service. Now, when we say that, there's a couple clarification points that we have here. But for instance, you might not want to bid on bakery supply stores near me because people might be looking for ways to buy supplies for cakes or bakeries, but not actually from your business. Now, the biggest thing here is to think about um, when it types, when it comes up to thinking about keywords, um, you're going to think about how can we include various keywords that include maybe best bakery near me, 
custom cakes, order cake on cupcakes online, ways that we can get people in the door. Now there's three different types of keyword match types within Google ads. We'll talk a little bit more about those, but when we talk about broad match, it basically means that we're going to show ads to the widest possible audience. So we might show for searches such as buy a birthday cake, not very specific, pretty broad. Now there are ways that we can do phrase matches. So when we do a phrase match, we might be looking at best bakery near me um, to ensure that it only includes our keyword phrase. Now, if we're looking at exact match, what we might do is we might put something as order custom cakes online because we know that that's gonna show ads only when the exact keyword is searched. Now for beginners, we're gonna use phrase match to ensure relevance when, while still capturing a variety of searches. We're gonna throw in a couple more and we're gonna include bakeries near me We're going to do bakery near me, buy cakes near me, buy birthday cakes. And we might do custom birthday cakes. All right, now that we have that, we're gonna go a little bit further. So we can see that they're providing a couple suggested keywords, cake shop near me, cupcakes near me, order birthday cakes. Obviously we'll use those. Now, <clears throat> the next step that we're gonna get into is the location side. Now, this is very important because some of these things people overlook and it's very important for us to make sure that our targeting is as correct as possible to ensure that we're not wasting any budget on things that we don't need or people that aren't in our right area. Now, if we think about location, there's a couple of different things that we've learned over the, the period of time. Now let's say specifically that we're a Philadelphia bakery. So the only place that we want to target is we want to target uh, either Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is this specific city. We could target Philadelphia DMA region, which is a little bit larger and usually outside of the Philadelphia area. Or we might look at the specific county. As you can see, the specific county is pretty much where Philadelphia is. So we only want to advertise within the Philadelphia area. Now. One really important thing that you can do here is there is a bunch of resources out there now online, but this is one of our favorites from Kessar Long, where it shows you exclusion lists that we're able to do. Now, what we take with this information is step one is we don't want individuals from other countries going and seeing our ads because we don't want to waste our budget. Obviously, within Google ads, we found that this can be a big thing, even if you only target the Philadelphia area. So what we do here is we're going to add locations in bulk. We're going to copy and paste those countries. And what we're able to do is there is an exclusion. So we're able to exclude all those matched audiences. We're able to pull them off. And we're going to go one step further because we are in one specific city. And we're only going to target Philadelphia and no other states. So what we're going to do is I copied the wrong location. Come back. Copy these. As you can see, it pulls up with all of the states. The only state that we don't want to exclude here is going to be Pennsylvania. So we'll pull those. We're going to search for those. We're going to exclude all those. So as you can see across our exclusion list, we are excluding every country outside of the US and every state within the US except for Philadelphia. And the only spot that we're targeting is going to be Philadelphia, this small part here. Now this allows us to have a reach total reach of 10 million people, a little over 10 million people. And the other important part is because of our specific industry, and again, this can change based on what you're doing. If we're a bakery, the only thing that we want to target is a presence in those areas. Now we want to exclude also a presence in those areas because if someone's interested in um, some other state, but they live in the Philly area, we don't want to exclude them. So it's very important that we put presence here and presence there as well. Now, this is going to be where you can select different languages. If you're bilingual or different than English, um, you're able to import something here. And this is going to be where you can get a little bit more technical. So we are going to search for uh, people looking for, sometimes you can see if they're looking for cakes. So they are technically in market for baked goods. Now, what Google defines as in market for baked goods, we can scroll over here and see the audience type. If we scroll over baked goods, so there's obviously not a weekly impressions that is available, but you can see that the top related audience segments are cooking and baking ingredients, Christmas items and decor, cookware and bakeware, 
Uh, there's some YouTube categories here. Now, the other thing that we might be looking at is maybe party supplies and planning, um, potentially gift baskets, Valentine's Day items and decor. We might be looking at um, aspiring chefs if that was in our market. Obviously, it's not. So we're what we're going to do is for right now, we're able to observe these in-market audiences, and then we're able to change the targeting down the road to where we can do it here. Now, these other two locations, two, two other selections are very important as well, because if we are a local area, we have the option to either get on the search network, which is Google's millions of sites that we're able to advertise on. Traditionally, we're not a huge fan of that. Same thing here with Google Display Network, as usually we're seeing a decrease in conversions for something local like a bakery. Now that we have our campaign figured out where we're targeting the keywords, this is where it's going to lead into writing effective ad copy. Now, this is going to be something that's very important because at the end of the day, this is going to be what people are seeing when they search for bakeries in Philadelphia, PA, things like that. Now, the biggest thing here is you have the option to go everything from one, one headline all the way to 15. Usually Google requires at least three. So we're looking at uh, three headlines that we'll need to create. And then there's something des described as descriptions. This is going to be the second part here where people are also going to see that. Now, something that we would put in here is let's say that we want to highlight um, something along the lines of order fresh cupcakes today. So it's going to be one of our first keywords. Now, Google also gives you some recommendations when you scroll this over, because as you know, there are different um, recommendations based on your website. If you actually had a website um, that was relevant, it would be able to pull things from that. But what we're going to look at is we're going to put in custom cakes available, and we're also going to put best bakery near you. Now, some recommendations here for best practices is if you've been established for, let's say, over 10 years, um, we're going to put uh, uh in business for over 10 years. So headlines like this build a little bit of trust, helps people want to shop with you. You could also do locally owned and operated. Things like this really make a better buying experience, traditionally speaking. Now for descriptions, this is gonna be where we highlight what makes your business unique. So what we might put here is we might put everything from delicious, fresh baked cupcakes and cakes for all occasions. And here we might do something along the lines of same day orders available, visit our bakery or order online. This allows for someone to see exactly what your ad describes. And obviously, as you can see, this is going to rotate with different headlines. The more you have in here, the more that it's going to ro rotate. Now, there's a couple other things you can do here in site links and extensions we're able to create different site links. So if we had a cupcake link on our website, we'd be able to say, uh, purchase cupcakes in this spot. And this allows for the consumer to go directly to, so let's say we're doing phillybakery.com slash cupcakes. We're able to do the same thing for uh, cakes or whatever this looks like, depending on your industry. This allows for you to take users to a different spot on your website and gives them the option to make a selection on what they want to look at when it comes to your ads. Now, the other thing you can do here is there are multiple different extensions that we can look at across your campaign. One of them being, we can actually go into the different asset, asset up types. So what this allows for you to do is if you're running a promotion, we're able to add a promotion here that says $30 off cakes, off your next purchase, something like that. You can do a monetary discount, you can do a percent discount, up to a monetary discount, up to a percent discount, which is a really great thing. You can add prices for different things. So if you have a specific birthday cake that you're selling, uh, you could say that it was a specific price. You can have a phone number. So this allows for people to automatically call you. You can do lead forms and you can do apps, which is great. The other thing here is you can add tracking. So we can make sure that we have the right tracking parameters set up. This is where we could say specific campaign values, so you might put in um, campaign IDs or Google ads just to make sure that you know exactly where traffic is coming. Now, now that we've created the ad, this is gonna be where we look at um, getting the actual budget set up. Now it's gonna provide some recommendations. So we want to say that our bidding strategy is based around clicks, 
because right now we don't have conversions set up. So we want to make sure that we're not wasting our budget. When it takes it here, this is going to be your daily recommended budget. Now there's a keyword keyword planner that when you get into Google ads, you can actually see different, different keywords that you can bid on. You can obviously think about more keywords than we put in here. But what this Google ads planner does is this allows for us to see exactly where we need to be spending our money and what potential customers or other client, other competitors are spending when it comes to Google ads. Now, this isn't end all be all. We've seen everything from when we put $500, it recommends that we spend a thousand. So obviously Google's recommending spend here. But as you can see, you can see the average cost per click. So we know that if we spend $45 per day, we'll receive traditionally speaking, 2,288 clicks with an average cost per click of 14 cents. We can obviously go a little bit lower and we could also set our budget at let's say $15. And we know that we're potentially gonna get 1300 clicks for an average cost per click of eight cents. Now, whenever we're ready, we put our budget of $15 we enter our payment details and obviously then the campaign goes live and we're able to optimize from there. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to stop talking through this and we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of steps that you need to take to review and launch your campaign and make sure that it's all good. Now, when it comes to reviewing your campaign, you need to double check your daily budget, targeting keywords and ad copy to make sure that everything is set up properly. You also need to make sure that you're happy with your bidding strategy and the keywords that you've selected. Now, when you preview your ad, Google obviously lets you preview what your ad's gonna look like on both desktop and mobile. So we need to make sure that our ad is optimized for mobile as more users are probably searching on their mobile devices. Now, when you click launch your campaign, it's going to go live. Now, it's not automatically going to go live. Google has a review process set up. So we know traditionally speaking, unless there's some sort of disapproval that happens, your ads are going to start appearing in Google search results once they're approved, usually within 24 hours. And then congrats, your campaigns are live, but the work doesn't stop here. So let's talk about what we need to do next. Why optimization matters. This is gonna be where once your campaigns are live, it's important to regularly monitor its performance to make adjustments and improve results. Now, a couple key metrics that we like to track across optimization is one, click-through rate. So click-through rate measures how many people clicked on your ad after seeing it. This usually is a pretty good indicator that if you have a well-performing ad or a well um, a non well-performing ad, we might see a five to 10% click through rate, meaning that five to 10% of people that see your ad actually click through to your ad. Now, a lower performing campaign might be something like one to 2% where only one to 2% of people are clicking through to your campaign. And that's when you need to realize what do we need to change to bring this up to maybe five to 10, maybe a little bit higher. Now, the other thing we can look at is if you have conversions set up on the Google ad side of things, you can actually track conversion rate to see how many clicks actually turned into conversions, such as sales, lead form submissions, phone calls, things like that. Now, the last thing that we wanna look at is the quality score. Google rates your ad relevance and landing page quality. And obviously the higher, the better the score, your ad's performance. Now this is out of 10. So sometimes you see a four out of 10, it allows for you to maybe make some optimizations, allows for you to bump it up to maybe six or eight out of 10, or maybe 10 out of 10. Now, the biggest tip here is obviously it's important to start small, analyze your campaign's performance, and then make adjustments to keywords, bids, and ads copy based on what's working. So there you have it, a complete step-by-step -step guide to setting up your first Google Ads campaign. Now you can start driving targeted traffic to your website or store. If this guide helped you, don't forget to like the video and let me know in the comments how your first campaign goes. And of course, hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any future marketing tips.